a little while ago, one of you in the comments made me aware of this thing of the Jim Baker show coming out with uh, fear-mongering about the rapture issue. And so I checked into it and uh, found some interesting things I thought I'd share with uh, the body of Christ out there, those that are truly saved. And um, just to show you the, the weird connections here with some things. But uh, they, there's a video here, this guy, uh, just total fear-mongering about uh, the rapture issue. I want to show you here why the guy's wrong, uh, just to kind of uh, explain some things. So let's watch this. How many know that gun sales has gone up for the last six months in a row? Did you know that? Zach, did you see that headline yes. today? Yes, I did. Gun sales set record for six months in a row. Why? I mean, why would gun sales be going up? What? What? Do you know what I don't know? I don't know why. Do you know? Have any idea? Okay, let me just pause it here for a minute. I don't know why gun sales are going up. I mean, we don't really know it. Do you know why? This guy, you know. Oh, I thought this guy's Jim Baker's supposed to be getting these prophetic dreams and all this other stuff. Supposed to have this great career as a as a great man of God and everything. And by the way, if you're a younger viewer and you don't, you're going, who's Jim Baker? I don't know who this Jim Baker is. Jim Faker. I mean, uh, excuse me, Baker. Um, way back in the 1970s and 80s and things, mostly in the 1980s, he was a very popular televangelist. They had the PTL Club, which stood for Praise the Lord. A lot of people joked and said, "Pull the leg." You know, somebody's pulling your leg, it means that they're deceiving you. They're conning you. And uh, that's what Jim Baker was all about. He was conning people. And he'd have all kinds of big celebrities on there. He had Roy Rogers and his wife, uh, Colonel Sanders from Kentucky Fried Chicken. He had a Catholic nun on the one time. All these big guys. Of course, the charismatic healers like uh, Oral Roberts and things. Uh, there's some of his old programs on uh, still here on, on YouTube. You can look it up the original Jim Baker show, the PTL Club. And essentially what happened is um, there was a woman that came forward and said that she had been paid off to be quiet, that she had actually been involved in an adulterous relationship with Jim Baker, and I think some other guy too or something, and that they had paid her off to keep her silent. She was not going to be silent anymore. So he had to step down as pastor, which he did. And, uh, and then it came out that he was actually scamming people um, and big story, I'll just kind of hit the, the main details of it. Uh, he was scamming people. He was taking, he was saying, you can join this, this thing and we're going to build this and do that. He's a con artist. That's all the guy is. He's, he's a, he's a huckster, you know, like a snake oil salesman. They, they, they con you into buying stuff or sending money and things like that. And they're spending it on some huge big thing, you know, and they're keeping the money. And uh, basically what happened is he went, you know, to prison. He was sentenced to 45 years in prison and a $500,000 fine. Interesting part is, though, after serving only a few years, he got called back in and they said, we're going to drop the 45-year prison sentence and get rid of the $500,000 fine. And we're just, just going to have to, you're just going to have to serve eight years in prison. And then he only actually served five and was let out on parole. And you know what else is interesting? And we're going to see it here in a little bit. Um, before he went into prison, he was pre-trib. And when he came out, he's now post-trib. And it's uh, because he studied the Word of God while in prison. Sounds kind of like Ken Hovind to me, doesn't it? No connection. No connection. You know, Ken Hovind uh, making all kinds of money and things like this gets put in prison for structuring, even though he doesn't know it was structuring. I didn't know it was structuring. I was just taking out a little bit below the legal limit of, of what you can take out and stuff and, and doing this every month and everything. But he didn't know it was structuring. That doesn't even make any sense, you know? I mean, if, you're, if you don't understand what structuring is, then why are you getting, a, you know, specifically doing things to get under the law of structuring? But we'll continue here. Uh, Look at the con artist stuff going on here. Check this out. 
Oh, I think people are becoming concerned what they're seeing. Violent crime in many U.S. cities around this country is up double digits. In cities all over the nation, we're seeing an increase in crime. After years and years, there were declines. Crime was going down for such a long time, Jim. But now crime in many cities, many of our large cities, is up by double digits. But I think it's larger than that. I think people are concerned about what's happening. They're preparing. I know my wife and I are preparing more than ever before. We've got more food and supplies than we've ever had before. Uh, us personally, I think people in, in the pit of their stomachs, most Americans know what's coming, even though the mainstream media is such a powerful force. They're telling us everything's going to be okay. Well, you know, Jesus said there's going to be a time when there's no food to eat. Jesus says this. Okay. Stop there. Uh, of course, they're using, they'll use all kinds of different versions. They use this MEV thing a lot. Uh, they'll even use the King James Bible occasionally just to deceive the older people. But uh, I have said since way back in 2009, I did my first uh, part of my three-part study on uh, the post-trib rapture thieves. And I said that they will come and they will steal things. They will kill your joy and, and uh, they'll take away from the Jews. They will uh, kill your joy and they will take away your crown of reward for looking for Jesus Christ coming back. And I said, every single post-tribber without fail, every single one will always go to Matthew chapter 24. Every single one without fail, they always do it. And I've never had to repent of that statement since 2009. It's 2016 now. Uh, they've all done it. They all will do it. They all have to go to Matthew chapter 24. Even though you read Matthew chapter 24, again, I have a whole expository study going verse by verse, the whole way through it, showing it is clearly written to Jews. You say, no, it's written to Christians. There aren't any Christians available there. Okay? There are no Christians around in Matthew chapter 24. Why? Jesus didn't die on the cross yet. You say, well, the, Ma the book of Matthew was written years after the cross. Yes, but it's recording historical events. Okay, it's recording the events that took place before Jesus died on the cross. And who is he speaking to? The Jews. That's why he's, there's a warning about the Sabbath day. That's why he talks about people in Judea. That's why, you know, when he talks about the seeing the Antichrist, the abomination of desolation uh, spoken of by Daniel the prophet, standing in the holy place. What is the holy place for a Christian? We have no holy place. Our bodies are the temple of the Holy Ghost. But in the time of Jacob's trouble, the Jews rebuild the temple and the Antichrist sets himself up in the temple. Matthew 24 is to the nation of Israel. There's not a Christian present. But see, they all do it. Standard operating procedure for post-tribbers. Let's continue. Before he comes back. That's what he said. It's very clear, very plain. Just read Matthew 24. I'll get you one it's other places in the Bible, but read Matthew 24. What will happen before Jesus returns? What is the sign? Yeah. Even the Antichrist is in there. Go ahead. Go ahead. Oh, I completely agree, Jim. One uh, scripture that was very revealing to me and that showed that there's going to be tremendous persecution of Christians before the rapture. Well, the rapture is also known as the resurrection in scripture. It's the same thing. The rapture is when we're resurrected, we're gathered to meet Jesus. So I wanted to read something. Okay. The rapture is when we're gathered to meet Jesus. It's the rapture is the resurrection. That's true. But uh, let, me, let me just say this. Again, look at the scriptures. Where is there any dead saints coming up? In Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, and, and Luke 21. Show me one place where dead saints are coming up. Show me one, one place where there's a resurrection of dead saints. I'll give you a hint. It's not in there. Why? Because Matthew 24, Mark 13, Luke 17, Luke 21 are talking about the second coming at the end of the time of Jacob's trouble. The rapture passages, which are all through uh, the Pauline epistles especially, but the big ones are 1 Corinthians 15, 51 through 58, 1 Thessalonians chapter 4, verse 16 through 18. Those are talking about the resurrection of dead and living Christians. It's also in Ephesians chapter 1. But again, see, they'll confuse that. These post-tribbers, that's why they're liars. That's why I get so hard on them. I call them heretics because they will lie to you. They'll say, you know, Christians, it's talking about the, the resurrection of Christians. There aren't any Christians in the book of Matthew chapter 24, okay? There are no Christians there. You say, how do you know? Because the word Christian does not appear because nobody was there believing in Jesus Christ's death, burial, and resurrection on the cross because it hadn't happened yet. Why is it so difficult for some people to understand? 
Let's continue. Quickly out of Revelation chapter 20, starting in uh, midway through verse 4. It says, I saw the souls of those who had been beheaded for their witness of Jesus and for the word of God, beheaded. They had not worshipped the beast or his image and had not received his mark on their forehands or on their hands. They came to life and reigned with Christ for a thousand years. The rest of the dead did not come to life until the thousand years were ended. This is the first resurrection. Blessed and holy are those who take place in the first resurrection. I don't know what a part of first people don't understand. In the <laughs> Let me stop there for a minute. You know, it's kind of funny. He said, in their forehands or their, or their hands or something like, okay. <laughs> you know, slip of the tongue. I mean, the guy just does it all the time. We're going to see really messes up here coming up here soon but this is the first resurrection oh okay well if nobody is resurrected until the end of the millennial kingdom that kind of makes it difficult for saints that rule and reign with christ for the thousand years <laughs> i mean you know if part of our the blessing of 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 being a christian is that we get to rule and reign with christ on the earth for the thousand years but if the first resurrection doesn't happen until the end of the millennial kingdom, then literally these guys are making the rapture and the second coming at the end of the thousand years. How does that work out? So the second coming is at the end of the thousand years. I thought the tribulation, tribulation was only seven years. You know, that's just a regular mantle clock over there. It's not a cuckoo clock, but you know, maybe this guy has a cuckoo clock. You know, maybe his head comes out, cuckoo, 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 you know, it'd be appropriate. Let's continue. First resurrection includes those who were beheaded, who refused to take the part of the mark of the beast, who went through that horrible persecution. So if the resurrection took place before the rapture, then how can the first resurrection include these believers? Okay. If the, res if the resurrection happened before the rapture, uh, no. The rapture is the resurrection. And, and, how, and how could it can include these other believers? Because the first resurrection has multiple parts to it. If he actually read the Bible, the real one, the King James Bible, 1 Corinthians chapter 15 talks about that. Christ the first fruits. You know, let's, let's actually go there. I'll show you. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. I'll learn you. All right. 1 Corinthians 15, verse 20 through 23. But now is Christ risen from the dead and become the first fruits of them that slept, Old Testament saints. For since by man came death, by man came also the resurrection of the dead. For as in Adam all die, even so in Christ shall all be made alive. But every man in his own order, Christ the first fruits, afterward they that are Christ at his coming. Then cometh the end, when he shall have delivered up the kingdom to God, even the Father, when he shall have put down all rule and all authority and power. Three parts. These guys can't read plain English. Okay? Let's continue. It's, uh, it's, it's infuriating. It's very frustrating to me. And so, but there's so much deception out there today. And the Apostle Paul actually warned us about this nearly 2,000 years ago in 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. He said, Now, brothers, concerning the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and concerning our gathering together unto him, when does that happen? That happens at the rapture. It happens at the resurrection. We ask you not, uh, we ask you not to let your mind be quickly shaken or be troubled, neither in spirit nor by word nor by letter, coming as though from us, as if the day of Christ is already here. Do not let anyone deceive you. Every Christian should underline that in their Bibles in any way. For that day will not come unless the falling away comes first. And the man of sin is revealed, the son of destruction, who opposes and exalts himself above all that is called God and is worshipped, so that he sits as God in the temple of God, showing himself as God, referring to the abomination of desolation we read about in Matthew chapter 24, Daniel chapter 29. So it said, do not let anyone deceive you. We've got so many supposedly spirit-filled Christians, ministers standing up there today talking about we're about to be caught away. We've got all these books where the Apostle Paul says, don't be deceived by a letter. Well, people are buying millions of books that say a pre-tribulation or rapture is coming. A pre-tribulation rapture is not coming. The Bible is not trying to trick us. Okay, let me just pause it there for a minute. The Bible's not trying to trick us. Let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. Let no man deceive you. And he's sitting there deceiving people. You see? 
evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse, deceiving and being deceived. And if you notice there that their studio, it's, it's just filled with all, a whole bunch of junk sitting around, survival goodies, survival food in, in five-gallon plastic pails so you can put it down in your underground bunker and stuff like this and prepare to endure to the end. Huh. Get busy preparing to survive the entire seven-year period and stop winning souls. And stop trusting that the Lord's going to catch you away imminently. So you stop to think about the things laying up treasures in heaven and you start to try laying up treasures on the earth. And of course, you know, Jim Baker has a part in this. We'll show you that here in a minute. Let's continue. You know, these free trippers, they, they don't have any scripture to point to. So they start getting into mind games and they start twisting scriptures and say, well, if you squint really hard, maybe you can see something over here and you got to put it with over here. The Bible is very clear. Just read right. what the Bible says. It says it's there's not a pre-tribulation rapture. Jim Baker says he's not going to try to convert anybody on this, but I am because millions of believers are being hurt by this doctrine. <laughs> The Bible says there's no pre trib rapture. Okay, stupid. Chapter and verse, please. You know? It's so funny. These people are such stinking lying hypocrites. Show me one verse that says pre trib rapture. And I say, well, that exact word. Well, see, it's not in the Bible. And I say, okay, do you believe in a post trib rapture? Yes, that's what the Bible teaches. Really? Where does it say post trib rapture? <laughs> you know? Hypocrite. This stupid nonsense. Millions of people are being hurt by this doctrine. Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me? I mean, when the Lord catches us away from here, and it's coming soon, when he catches us away, you talk about what a day that will be, when my Jesus I shall see, when I look upon his face, the one who saved me by his grace. You know, when he takes me by the hand and leads me through that promised land, what a day, glorious day that will be. It's an old hymn if you don't know what I'm talking about. There will be no sorrow there, no more burdens to bear, no more sickness, no pain, no more parting over there. And forever I will be with the one who died for me. What a day, glorious day that will be. We're being hurt by the rapture? You say, is he really that crazy? No, not really. He's after your money. I'll show you that here in just a couple minutes. And some other interesting little things. Let's continue with this more entertainment here. You know, I just say this real quick. A friend of mine and I, back when I was down in Pennsylvania before I knew my wife, we used to watch Benny Hinn occasionally because it's great entertainment. <laughs> These people are just nuts. I don't see how people can be so dumb as to be deceived by them. But let's continue. Millions of Christians are not going to be prepared. Millions of Christians in America are going to die waiting for a pre-jubilation rapture. That is not going to happen. We need to tell the truth. Very few people are telling the truth. That's why I love Jim Baker. I love what they're trying to do. They are dare to go on the airwaves and tell the truth, even though it costs some supporters, it costs some money, but they're, they're telling you the truth. <laughs> it costs some supporters, it costs some money. Yeah, and he's got five-gallon buckets of survival crap behind him there, you know, that he's trying to, to sell to you. That's why he's trying to do the fear-mongering thing. Billions of people are going to die waiting for the preacher rapture. Call now and place your order, you know. <laughs> I mean, all you can do is just laugh at this stuff. It's so stupid, you know. I mean, give me a break. I have so many hours of... of Scripture after scripture after scripture after scripture proving that the body of Christ is called out beforehand. Okay? And you know, millions of Christians are going to die waiting for the pre trib rapture. Okay, let me ask you a question there to this little guy here, if he's even watching this, which, uh, whatever. Uh, let's just ask a question. What about those Christians that go into that time and take the mark? Huh? Ephesians chapter 1 and chapter 4 says that we're sealed with the Holy Spirit of promise until the day of redemption. But Revelation 14 verses 9 through 11 says, If any man takes the mark, he gets God's wrath and goes to hell and burns and the smoke of his torment goes up forever and ever. Uh, what do you do with that? Huh? You see, this whole issue can be solved with just that one little question. 
if you get these little post-tribber heretics, these Roman, it's it's Catholic is what it is. I've talked about this thing. It's what the catechism teaches. I've showed that in other videos. It's what the Roman Catholic catechism teaches. That the church has to go through a final time of purification. Uh-huh. Yeah. See, Catholics can't believe in an imminent being caught away and going up to be with the Lord in heaven. Why? They believe in purgatory. They believe you have to die in a state of grace. They believe that you have to be faithful to Christ's church and all this other stuff. That's what this whole thing is about. They're trying to stop those that are truly saved. They're trying to destroy your faith in the imminent return of Jesus Christ to catch away his bride. We go up. And so instead of you being out there winning souls, you're going to start stockpiling food, survival food, which most of it is garbage, by the way. Let me just say that. A lot of this MRE and stuff like this, it is not fit to give to your dog or your cat. And people will start trying to live on this survival food. They're going to get sick and weak, and they'll die. You are not intended to live on MREs. Okay? Even in the military, my wife was you know, in the military. She's ex-military, two branches of the military, actually. And they have the chow hall or the mess tent or whatever else, you go in there, you have food. You're not supposed to be eating MRE food all the time. If you're a frontline combat or something like that, you don't have a choice, okay. But this survival junk that they're selling, it's very, very low in nutrients. It's got all kinds of chemicals in it to preserve it so that it'll last for years and years and years in your five-gallon bucket. And the stuff is toxic. Even if you do canned goods, a lot of canned goods and stuff like that from your own fruits and vegetables and stuff, you're heating it past the point where you're killing the nutrients. But God can't protect you. See, that's really the underlying thing here, too. God is completely being knocked out of the picture with this whole thing. You know, God is somehow foreign and distant to you now if you're a Christian today and you're going to go through the tribulation. You know, you might lose your salvation. You're probably going to die. And, you know, he can't provide for you and he can't protect you and he isn't going to take you out of here before he pours out his wrath. Let's finish up here. And so I've avoided it for a long time, but finally I felt God telling me, you've got to address this because the time is at hand. Someone's got to put this in an easy to understand way, mm -hmm. what the Bible really says, yes. explain it to the people, right. tear down this false doctrine okay. because you know people... So many believers, they're not getting prepared and they're not getting ready for what God is about to do on this earth because a great move of God is coming. But people are saying, it's not for me because I'm about to be pulled out of here. See, here's another one of the tactics of the post-trib heretics. They will say, first of all, they'll play good cop, bad cop. All right, there are some that will play um, good cop, we'll say. Okay, you get Ken Hoven, and he says, this pre-trib rapture doctrine is silly. Nobody believes it anymore except for a small minority of very vocal people. I'm sure I'm included in that. Uh, they just pretend that I don't exist. It's kind of funny, all these guys, you know, uh, Stephen Anderson, Ken Hoven, uh, a lot of these guys, they know who I am. And it's just like, who? <laughs> you know, <laughs> come on. <laughs> you know, but uh, they'll play, they'll play the, the good cop thing. Oh, yeah. nobody believes the pre trip rapture anymore. It's been debunked. It's been just totally destroyed. Nobody believes it. That's a serious student of the Bible. <laughs> like, yes, we do. Or they'll play bad cop. They'll say, uh, you know, the pre trip rapture, you know, we're going to lose supporters. We're going to lose money, but it doesn't matter. We have to tell the truth. I mean, there's so many people that are pre trib now and us poor post tribbers we're persecuted by them. <laughs> okay. You know, They'll do that, but, uh, you know, it, it's, it's just absurd. Let me show you here. Uh, I'm going to actually I'll, I'll do this in a minute or two here. I'm going to actually do a switch over to Camtasia, and I'm going to do, I'm going to get on their website, and I'm actually going to show you uh, all the junk that they sell and everything. They're trying to get your money, and they actually have a guy who's a prophet of preparedness. That's in the book of Acts someplace. I know it's there, you know, someplace. But, uh, you know, and, and they, they do this thing of, you know, I have to dismantle this doctrine. And we, have to, we have to tear down the pre-trib rapture and everything else. Uh, well, if you do, you're working for Catholicism. All right. So, um, absolutely absurd. But another thing I want to show you here really quickly, I'm going to show you a couple of pictures. I just was doing some search and trying to find it. I have a book someplace in my collection about uh, Jim Baker in the old days, the PTL club and all this stuff. 
Don't know where it's at. I looked and looked for it. It's probably in one of my storage. I have a bunch of books and storage totes because there's just not enough room on my shelf here anymore uh, for all the books that we have. I got to build some more shelving and stuff like this here, but uh, as money permits and time permits as well. But um, I was looking for it, couldn't find it. So I was online trying to find pictures and things, and I came across this picture. I'm going to put it up here. Uh, very interesting picture of Jim Baker. Just a recent picture here. You can see it. Um, interesting there. You say, well, what's the significance of that? So he's got a black suit on with a black top hat. What's the big deal? Well, let me show you another picture here. Put the two side by side. Uh, the guy there is a, beside Jim Baker is a dressed up as a worshipful master in the Masonic Lodge. The guy that conducts the ceremonies, basically. Here's another little picture I'll put up with them of uh, the one of the books, the Masonic books that comes out of a worshipful master. They wear kind of a tall black top hat. Hmm. Why would Jim Baker be dressed up like a worshipful master? Interesting. Uh, could it be that that's the reason why he was originally given 45 years and a $500,000 fine, and a few years later they knocked out the fine and dropped his 45-year prison sentence down to eight years, and then he only served five? And if you look at uh, the Jim Baker Show thing, his YouTube channel, he's got Mike Huckabee, as well as a Rabbi Jonathan Kahn artist. Don't be deceived by that guy. You know, sometimes you look at him and you go, well, it seems like he's pretty good. He's a con artist. He's a faker, you know. Joel Richardson, the guy that uh, says that Mystery Babylon is not the Vatican, it's Islam. <laughs> Islam is created by the Vatican. You know, stupid. And Joel Richardson's book is endorsed by Ken Hovind and also by a Jesuit professor. And Richardson endorses that on his, you know, website. I have a video on that, you know, showing a Jesuit professor promoting his book and he puts it on his website. Like, hey, look, I'm proud of this fact that a Jesuit is endorsing my book. <laughs> you know, well, of course a Jesuit would, would endorse a book like that, you know. Absurd. So uh, I'm going to switch over to Camtasia now. I'm going to show you Jim Baker's website and uh, show you this interesting stuff on here. All right, we are here on the Jim Baker Show channel on YouTube. And we can see this guy here again, Blur's Examination of the Rapture. I'm just going to click on this thing. We're not going to bother listening to it. But uh, just kind of skip ahead here, right there. Okay, there. Just pause it. Again, you know, and, and this, well, I'll say about this in a minute. I mean, look at all this stuff. Solar panels, you got all the survival food, stock up, all this stuff like this. It's a scam, people. They're trying to get your money. That's all that this thing is. Just incredible. But uh, uh, he goes into the whole thing here, proving that the second coming is related to what's going on back in the book of uh, Joel, chapter 2. And he says, see, that's the rapture. <laughs> it's like, all you proved is this, that Jesus comes back with the saints at the second coming. You know, it's stupid, ridiculous. But you go to his actual website here, and look at this. Check this out. John Shorey, the, go back here, preparation prophet. <laughs> okay. <laughs> the preparation prophet. You know, I mean, that's in the Bible someplace, you know. Let's go to the store here. Uh, water pump, you know, uh, solar energy radio, power pal offer, uh, selling the MEV Bible, of course, why not, uh, birthday to canteen kits and uh, purified things, organic red supreme food, yeah, I'm sure it's real organic there, buddy. So, you know, again, we're not going to go through all this stuff, but it's just, it's absurd. It's all a money-making scheme, folks. That's all this thing is. Don't fall for it. Okay, one other thing I wanted to mention here, now that you've seen the website, I'm sure you're putting in your order for all the nice survival stuff so that you can endure to the end to be saved, you know. Yeah, don't spend the money on this survival stuff, okay? I mean, there, there are power outages and stuff like that. You should have some things around certainly. But if you're preparing to live for seven years without taking the mark of the beast, you have been deceived. 
if you're saved. Now, if you're one of these people that's new version and, and you believe that salvation is no repentance of sins, uh, just pray a little prayer, just believe, just pretend to be a Christian. If that's you, then you probably should start to stock up, okay? Um, use a little bit more brains than using, you know, stocking up on uh, the MRE types of foods and stuff like that. You know, you're going to have to have your own food supply and stuff. I mean, you'd be better off getting saved right now so you go up at the rapture, but if you're too bullheaded for that and you're convinced that you're going to be post-trib, okay, be post-trib, start stocking up. But another one of the things these people do, uh, which I forgot to mention earlier, and I wanted to just say here in closing, they say, God is going to be doing some things on the earth, and it's going to be a great working of the Lord. You know, it's not God's wrath. It's just, it's going to be a really good time of, of harvest of souls. Uh, well, <laughs> it will be in some ways. But it's not going to be because people's, you know, they're just going to be so receptive to the gospel. It's going to be because people are being literally forced into life and death choices. And a lot of people are going to, that, have, that realize that they weren't truly saved, they're going to be getting saved in that time period rather than taking the mark. So do not fall for this post-trib stuff. It's fear-mongering. It's designed to get your attention off of witnessing for Jesus Christ and, and having your faith in Jesus Christ taking care of you. That's what this whole issue is. That's what the whole thing is. And I've said it before. I'm going to repeat one more time because it bears repeating. And that is two scenarios. First scenario, I tell you exactly one year from this day, from this hour, this minute, Jesus is going to be catching away his bride. The rapture, one year from the day, exactly. Going up. How are you going to spend your year? Scenario number two. I tell you that one year from today, the Antichrist is going to be showing up and the Great Tribulation, again, another subject, that is starting. One year from today, how are you going to spend your year? The first scenario, you're going to be out winning souls like crazy. The second scenario, you're going to be stockpiling goodies to survive. You're not going to care about winning one soul to Jesus Christ. And how could you? Hey, you ought to get saved. What does that mean? Well, you see, God's wrath is going to be coming here in a couple months, you know, or a year, we'll say. Um, and so you ought to get saved so he can, you might be able to make it through there. <laughs> yeah, okay. That is going to be it. Thank you for watching. Don't be deceived by these con men.